Google is a great tool for finding information all across the globe. You can find pieces of information from here, from there, from everywhere, and now you can start to compare and contrast those pieces of information. The great thing about this is, well, there's so much information out there. So that's where the next set of skills come in. This is the skill of checking your facts. We want you to be able to not just take in something you find on the web and immediately believe it, but actually understand it deeply and see whether or not it's believable. What I mean by believable varies a lot from context to context and should vary for you as well. But the first thing I want to point out is that when we do a search, you get back a ranked set of results through one, through two, through three, and so on. Now, one thing to understand is because Google puts a result first, that doesn't necessarily give it any credibility. What it does is it says that this is a very highly ranked result with respect to all the functions that Google uses in order to determine if this is a valuable, appropriate result for your query. So if you make a query where something comes back that's completely incredible to you, it could be because those are the words that appear commonly in that link to that page, or that page has a lot of content relevant to that query. But it's not exactly the same as credibility. Think of it more as a kind of popularity measure where we've done a lot of work to try to remove the content that might be spurious or off topic. So the query to page match will be highly on topic, but that's not exactly the same as credibility, if you see what I mean. Another important thing to keep in mind when you're doing your queries is to think about appropriate terms. So certain terms carry a lot of political and semantic freight with them. So if, for example, you do a search for a political word like, say, Obamacare, that will imply a set of perspectives on that topic. So you have to understand what's going on when you do a particular kind of search. One of the great things about the fast iterative nature of Google is you can find out what those perspectives are very, very quickly. You can dive deep into the different perspectives on Obamacare, for example, by looking at blogs or news posts or a whole, whole variety of things that are out there. Using Google search allows you to very quickly see all those different points of view. You can also compare terms like, for example, the Falklands, the Falkland Islands down way in South America. If you use the term Falklands, you're going to get one set of results. If you ter- use the terms Malvinas, you'll get a different set of results. It's the same islands, both cases, but one's the English term and one's the Argentinian term. Both carry a set of perspectives on whether or not you, the state owns that, or which state owns it, or who should protect it, or what the whole story is behind those islands. So be aware that the search terms you use may give a perspective that you may not know about and you need to understand. A third point here is that credibility is really not just a single simple function. You can do things by to help out your search by looking for fact-checking sites. There are a lot of them in association with political topics, a lot of them in association with topics that come up a lot in the news and so on. Look for those. They're incredibly valuable, if only to understand their perspective. One heuristic I tell a lot of people is just do one more search. It's incredible the number of times I see people do a quick search, find an answer, and they'll be happy with it. Just finding the first answer isn't really enough. I want you to walk away from this class thinking, I can do one more search. One more search will get me to a higher degree of credibility in understanding my topics. One method to do that is to look inside the URL. Now, we've already talked about URL as composed of several pieces. So this is the site, in this case, historywebsite.com. This is a made-up example. Within that, there's a directory called imperialism pointing to a document called Panama Canal. You can see, in essence, that it's wearing its ideas on its sleeve. You know that this particular document about the Panama Canal, which may be labeled something innocently like, say, the history of Panama, is actually coming from a particular perspective that's signaled by the use of the word imperialism in the URL. Pay attention to those things when you're going through and looking at your results. They will often give you a quick first signal about what's going on. Another technique you can use to sort of check and validate these things 
is the idea of doing range checking, sort of doing a sanity check on things that you see. So for example, not long ago, this quote, I mourn the loss of thousands of precious lives, got a great bit of play on the internet because it was attributed to Martin Luther King. Now in his blog post, Robert Strohmeyer from PC World points out that Google's range date search limiting trick can be used to sort of determine whether or not Martin Luther King really said that. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I put in the quote here, I mourn the loss of thousands of precious lives. I can continue, but that's probably enough there. You'll see here, there are a lot of references to it on the web. What I want to do, though, to figure out whether or not Martin Luther King actually said that, is use our date restriction tool. And so I'm going to come down here and do a custom range from, I'll give it infinite in the past, up to, say, 1, 1 slash 2000. If Martin Luther King said something like that before the year 2000, it would certainly show up. But in case here we have something it's uh, not showing up here. Let's, let's go back a little bit more. Uh, 1999, there are no results found for this. Now Martin Luther King published a great deal of content during his life and his speeches have all been transcribed and so on. This is an indication that something fishy is going on. How is it possible that out of all the writings and speeches of Dr. Martin Luther King, this particular phrase never really appeared? You see what I'm doing? We're using Google's range restriction feature as a mechanism to look back in time. This is a way to start to get a hint that maybe something needs to be looked into a little bit more deeply. And in truth, it turns out that was an inappropriately attributed quotation from somebody else that got attributed to Martin Luther King. This is one way to find out. What I wanted to show you in this first lesson is that there's a number of different kinds of things you can use in order to start to get a sense of the deeper credibility of a resource. The fact that a website appears number one, number two, or number three in the Google search results page doesn't necessarily give it factual credibility. It could be very convincing, it could be very well written, but it may not be true. Truth is not exactly the same as appearing high in the web rankings. With these tools, I think you now have the ability to go more deeply into your content, and I urge you to do that.